Okay. Hi everybody. Uh, little impromptu live. My pooch is not yet settled, so she'll, you'll probably hear her faff about a bit and then find a spot on her bed and do some circle work. So hello everybody, hi Jai. Um, yeah, I thought I'd just do a little impromptu hop on. Desperate need of a haircut. Um, just to talk about, so, busily typing away in DMs and I thought, you know what, this is easier just to have one conversation. Hello. Um, so, sometimes, hello, hi everybody, welcome, good to have you here. So, sometimes things happen that are a really good, hi Harika, that are a really good kind of like a teaching opportunity without sounding like a complete, you know, sort of superior wanker. They're a good teaching opportunity. They're a good thing that happens in the collective that you can pick up and go, okay, see this? This is a really good example of this. And currently, so I talked about something the other day and somebody DM'd me and said, maybe at some point you'll feel like you don't need to even mention any more about any of it. She meant it in a good way, but you will not hear me talk about masks. You will not hear me talk about my Sharona. You will not hear me talk about a whole heap of things that we are three narratives, four narratives on from. But if I feel called, if I feel inspired to share something with you about something that's currently happening, I'm going to talk about it if I want to talk about it because we want our power in the now. We want to be reminded of our power here and now. And sometimes what's happening is a good example. And so I'll talk about it. And the tennis is one of those things. So a lot of people are feeling in a bit of a swirl today. I think a lot of people were maybe on a big high and now they're kind of feeling like some of us are raining on their parade, right? Maybe feeling a bit hopeless, a bit dejected, a bit like, oh, fuck, do you have to like, do you have to ruin every good thing? that we have, right? So here's what I want to say about the tennis. If you love the tennis, enjoy it. I enjoyed it last night. I watched a couple of sets, right? I used to be really into it. I stopped after you couldn't go if you weren't for that for that period of time. And when we were in lockdown and they still had the tennis on, I stopped watching. It kind of lost me at that point, but I like tennis. Now, if you like tennis, enjoy it enjoy it. I enjoy going to the theatre. I enjoy watching movies, but I know that they are theatre. I know that it's a play. And I think that's the thing that, well, certainly was my intention with talking about it. So here's the thing. Where it's becoming really clear, and I talked about 2023 is the year of mastery. Let's master the game right? Let's really be in our mastery in this game. When you watch something like last night, where you have a clear outlined good guy and bad guy, they actually put the bad guy. Now that's for us. For the other side, remember the other side, the bad guy would have been the guy playing and the good guy was the guy sitting in, Billy G sitting in the audience, right? When you have such a clear delineated good guy, bad guy, just start to become aware and go, hmm, and how would you like me to feel about this? How would you like me to react to this, right? Because it's not about not having any kind of like passion or excitement or fun. Have fun with the game, right? You're in a game, have fun with it. What I'm wanting to do is to get you to be conscious of your emotions and your mind so that they can't be hijacked, so that someone else can't hijack them and go, this is how I want you to feel. And when I push that button, you go into that. This is what I want you to think. And when I press that, you will go into that. It's about becoming conscious within the game. It's not about not enjoying the game. It's not about don't go to the tennis. Oh my God, I can't believe you went to the tennis. It's not about any of that. It's about when they give you a good guy 
and a bad guy. And then what did you see this morning or even last night? I saw it this morning because I didn't stay awake till the end of it, right? This morning you see all this, oh, you know, it, redemption. Words like redemption. We have been vindicated. He is a hero. The game is afoot. And you have been re-triggered into the whole narrative again, right? You've been re-triggered into... I did a post recently about get on the fucking plane. Stop standing in the at the boarding gate watching the TV going any minute now. And that's what that whole vindicated thing is. This is your ego. When I'm saying you, I don't mean you. It's a complete generalized, I'm doing a complete generalized conversation. If this is, if this is you, great. If this isn't you, go, okay, the you she's talking about is not me. But if you had that desire triggered in you about this tennis game, about this win of, oh, the, you know, the light one and we were vindicated and see we were right and blah, 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 all of that. They've just re-triggered you into that whole narrative and your ego has been triggered because the ego is the part in each one of us, the least evolved part of our minds that we all have, right? If you're human, you have one. It got re-triggered into going, see, I was the good guy. I knew we were in the right. I knew we'd win. All that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? So it's not about not enjoying the tennis. It's about recognizing, oh, this has been hijacked to get me to feel a certain way, to get me to react a certain way, to, to re-trigger me into that. Does that make sense about what my intention is with using it as an example? Because of course this doesn't just happen in the tennis, right? In some things it'll be clear as day to you. In other things, it won't be. And so I think for a lot of people, it just wasn't. And it, when it takes you back into the divide, it's, you know, I've noticed lately too, quite a few people posting, I've been really thinking about how the last two years have impacted on me. And I've been journaling and I've been emotional about it. Now that's great if it's a cathartic healing, right? If you're sitting down with yourself and you're going, I acknowledge that I've just been through a really hard time for what, whatever this experience and journey was like for you, okay? If that's what you're doing, then that's healing. But I think a lot of people are being re-triggered by this kind of stuff, by a wound that gets picked at from the outside in order to keep a victim mentality and in order to keep a divide, right? That is very intentional. Now you can see that on the six o'clock news. You can see that when your local health, whoever, hoo-ha is, you know, talking, you can see, oh, they want to divide, but you might not have been able to see it with the tennis. And so it's such a good example. And even if you could see it, maybe you can see it on another level. Maybe you can see it and not be triggered by it, which would be the ideal, right? The ideal we all want to get to, the place of mastery we want to get to is, I see you and I'm not playing. I see it for the theater it is and I just enjoy the show. Or I switch off from the show I choose not to play or, you know, I'm, I'm using it to, for lessons. I'm using it to see what it can teach me. Where am I at, right? Which takes me into the next thing that people are frustrated about. I then shared something about controlled opposition and, and it was, it's a really good post up in my stories um, from Still Shining Bitches who just gave a really good explanation of why they exist and what their purpose is which then spiraled someone else into like, I think, I think they kind of felt like, oh, fuck, it's just too much. It's too much. It's too much. Who do I believe? What do I believe? Is it all, is it all just bullshit? Or should I stop believing the accounts that are telling me who, who to believe and who not to believe, right? 
Jai. It's kind of like the reason sports was created in the first place. Exactly. To redirect men's energy away from protecting and fighting for themselves and their families and focus it towards sport. Fantastic. Fantastically pointed out, Jai. So true. And what happened last night was the people were presented with a hero other than themselves. The hero, the king of Melbourne, the king of this, the goat, the la 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 la. Why would we hold up any person? And then all of this like cheering. Look, don't get me wrong. I like, I don't dislike the man, right? I don't know how far down the rabbit hole I believe um, what he is, right? Certainly he's in with some three letter organizations that, um, and you know, one, four, one, six, um, that, you know, I have no belief and trust in at all as being anything other than money laundering and worse, right? I don't doubt that he's part of that. So, however, in terms of a character in the game, I quite like him. But I'm certainly not going to hold him up as like to revere him as to go, wow, like imagine having the balls to say no to this. Millions of people did have those balls and they actually had those balls when they had no income or they had, you know, uh, they, they weren't, you know, millionaires with a world stage to fall back on in one way or another. So it, again, it's a good example of, so sports was created to redirect men's energy away from protecting and fighting for themselves. And now in terms of, you know, the crowd, it's created in order to direct your energy away from seeing yourself as your own hero or the men and women around you in your own family, in your own community and to have like pride in them and to, you know, tell them how proud of them you are. It's all about putting that one person on that pedestal and then all of this love. The other day in my stories, I said, knowing what you know now about anybody that has been allowed to get to the world stage, mainstream, world stage fame, would you go to a concert? And 38 people said no, and two people said yes. Last night was no different. It's, it's a concert. It's still a looshing event. It's still a looshing event. You're still, it's, you're, your energy is still being harnessed, right? So <clears throat> Phil recently said the ego is something that was most likely implanted by non-human entities. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the ego is, which might sound really weird given that I have spent my whole adult life learning about it and now teaching about it and having written a book about it. It might sound really weird for me to say I don't know what it is. That might be true. What I do know what I do know now for myself, right? I can only ever know for myself. You will know for yourself if what I'm saying resonates. What I do know now about the ego is that the matrix, the illusion, the circus wouldn't work without it. The forgetting who we are, right? The amnesia when we come into this current experience that we have of as planet Earth, as life, whatever we're currently going through, the ego is required for the amnesia to work. But I am, as you know, a great believer that it is not this terrible, awful thing that we have been led to believe. Why would we all have one? Yes, we would all have one if it was required for the game to work. But I also don't believe that the game is just nefarious. I do believe that the game has a higher purpose. I believe that we as souls come here for evolution and that waking up within the game is what we want to do, right? 
it's kind of like it, it's what we as souls desire to do. So I believe, as you know, Haruka, you've done work with me, you've read the book, Set the Tone, that the ego, when we are able to separate out from it and consciously choose to be the adult in the room instead of having ego run our minds so much that we don't even know this we don't even know when it is like there's no separation between it and and our higher selves but when we can separate the two out and we start to look at ego as a guide as part of our guidance system it will actually lead us out right it is actually part of the key to the exits because once you get really good at recognizing that I am not my ego, it is the least evolved part of me. It's the part of me that holds all the fear and all the division and all the doubt and all of my triggers. Then once you recognize, oh, I just forgot myself there for a minute, then it is actually part of your guidance system. It's like, you know, when you're driving along on the freeway, and you hit those bumps on the side of the lane and it says to you, you're about to go out of your lane. Like it's to basically snap you back in. You're about to go out of your lane. That's what ego is, right? So I don't think it's a, just a nefarious thing. I think it's part of the forgetting. And then once you wake up enough to recognize I am not that, I am not the thing that is fearful. I am not the thing that is, small and frightened and and tight and doesn't like change and you know I am not the trigger I am not the limitation then you can start to use it because when it rears up you recognize that oh I've forgotten myself here so it's it's like it's a gauge back into remembering um the separation of mind body and spirit yeah Yes, he's not a savior or representative. We are our own. Exactly. Exactly. I don't think ego is a bad thing. I think we actually need it. Yep, I do too. It must be trained and used properly though. And I think that's the part that we're lacking, not taught. Yes, so read my book because it'll tell you how to do it. Um, I agree. It is lacking and it's not taught probably purposefully because it is part of the exit strategy. So I fully agree with you that... A lot of people, look, a lot of spiritual teachers, a lot of like spiritual, um, I don't know, pathways teach about beyond the ego and getting past the ego and, you know, like killing the ego. People talk about like you have to have an ego death, all this sort of stuff. I actually do not believe that that is the case. Not whilst we're human, not whilst we're in physical form, right? Because... Do you know anybody on this planet that doesn't have an ego? No. But because it's demonized and because it's talked about like it's a bad thing, oh my God. Also, it's taught wrongly, right? We're taught that the ego is an overinflated sense of self. And that's not exactly true. The ego can have like... The ego can totally blow smoke up our ass. But the reason it does that is because it feels less than, right? The kind of person we would usually look at in a room and go, oh man, what a huge ego is usually the person in that room that is most frightened and that is most like doesn't feel like they can actually be themselves. The loudest because they don't feel heard. The most like um, kind of like antagonistic, aggressive, all of those things because they actually don't feel like they have any true power and so they use all of that ego bravado power, right? So if you can start to think of your ego as that's just, this is literally the least evolved part of me, so it's the most frightened, it's the most new, it has no memory of who I am, of the expansiveness of myself. It doesn't hold the wisdom that I hold. So therefore, it uses the past to determine what the present means to let me know when I am in danger. And so therefore, it is always looking backwards. 
It hates change because that frightens the living hell out of it. And because it has the job of actually keeping us alive and keeping us safe. So therefore, it, it's like putting a kid in charge of a house and going, make sure nothing happens. That child is going to be completely out of its element. And so therefore, our ego is completely out of its element. And that's why it tries to talk you out of doing things. It tries to talk you out of expanding. It tries to talk you out of adventure. It tries to talk you out of anything new, frightening, because it can't keep you safe in that. If you haven't done it before, it's like, oh, how, how will I keep you safe? I don't know what this means, right? You will meet someone and it will immediately go back through your database. So basically, this is what my book set the tone. Nothing can change until you do. This is what it does. It helps you to know what the ego is, separate yourself out from it, look at your own and what experiences have shaped its beliefs and then begin to choose differently, right? Because what the ego does is as, it, as you're going through your childhood, it's basically in a hypnotized state constantly looking at what does this mean? What does it mean to be female? What does it mean to be male? What does it mean? What does money mean? What does marriage mean? What does children mean? What does a job mean? All of this stuff, it decides it all generally by the time you're seven. And then it uses that for the rest of your life. So you'll meet someone at 42 and your ego will go, right, what do I know? What do I know? What do I know? What do I know? Oh, this is familiar here. I'll give you this. I'll give you this truth. And it'll put it in your head. And because you haven't learned to separate out from it, you will be triggered into a belief that all men are this, all women are that. In relationships, I am this. I am not safe when this happens. I am never heard. I am not respected. I am da-da-da. And it'll trigger it. And it'll go, here's evidence of it from the past. And until you learn to be the adult in the room, it'll take over. And so that's what's constantly happening and that's why we're able to be kept in this kind of like childlike state and in this victim mentality. Every time you're in victim mind, which you will be in, and I, when I say you, I mean all of you and me and all of us on the planet. We are in it way more and until we start getting conscious about it, we're in that way more than what we think. Every time we are in victim mentality, we're really in our ego. And you can't get yourself out of that without being able to access your wiser self, your higher self, and start to look at things differently. That's what's happening right now. So a lot of people are going, so is everyone controlled opposition? Do I just listen to no one? You know what? This is what I wrote down. Who do I trust? Yourself. You trust yourself. Your beginning, we are all, those of us who are choosing to take this opportunity. I understand not everybody's doing that, but those, who is, who, those of us who are choosing to take this opportunity are in a growing up phase. Mum and dad, who we've lived with our whole lives, who we've lived with for eons, have lost the fucking plot. We've turned around in 2020, some of you maybe long before, but definitely in 2020, a lot of people turned around and went, mum and dad have lost the fucking plot and the rules of living here are shit and I don't want to do it anymore and I'm going to move out. Okay, which actually takes me to my third one where someone asked me, asked me, okay, how do I get out of the matrix? I can't afford to not do the job that I, that I do. I have small children, so I can't just go right, stuff it all. So many of us, from 2020 went, okay, this is pretty shit and I need to get out of this. So it's all about discernment. Discernment. Who do I follow? What do I trust? You will have a whole heap of people who go, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't think there's anything wrong. So for them, there's not. So see how important it is to have your own discernment. That's no different than somebody else saying that's controlled opposition and you saying, no, that doesn't feel right for me or that message doesn't feel right for me. If, you're, if everywhere you look, 
it seems like you're being told that person's like controlled opposition, that person's whatever, or that person's whatever. If everywhere you look, it feels like that everything you've trusted and held as truth is kind of like crumbling. That's a really good place to be. That's a really exciting place to be. That's when you start to realize everything's upside down. Your ego is going to go, what the fuck? And it's going to try and talk you into just stop the process. Just stop. Just stop. It's too much. It's too much. Just stop. Just, just let's just stay where we are. Don't look into that anymore. Don't hang out with those people anymore because it's constantly triggered. It's frightened. It doesn't want the change, right? And so it's going to try and talk you into like, just don't, which is what I said to the person who said to me, how do I get out of the matrix? I can't right now leave my job, blah, blah, blah. And here's what I want to say to that. Getting out of the matrix is going to mean something different for everybody. So right now I'm talking about me. My, my intention is to be more and more to, be, to, to live freely, to be independent. But that starts with being independent of thought. That doesn't have to start with leaving your job. That doesn't have to start with homeschooling your kids. That doesn't have to start with living on 30 acres and being completely self-sustaining in terms of growing your own food and completely off-grid. There are people who, I'm actually part of an off-grid um, community and this group there are so many people in that that are so still connected to the matrix in their mind in their fears that are so easily triggered and they are frightened so what is the point of living out there they may as well live in the middle of the city right so it's got to start here it, it has to start with a mind shift right and you can use the game. You don't have to, you are human and you are physical right now for a particular reason, for a particular purpose. You chose this, it is intentional, there wasn't a mistake. As much as I spent decades of my life going, who fucked up and I wanna to talk to them now, it wasn't a mistake, you are here at this time, you are meant to be in this human expression of your greater self. There's money around at the moment. So if you want to use it, use it. There are material things for your comfort, for, for your ease. If you want to use them, use them. You are physical. So you are going to be using physical things. You do not need to sit on a mountain and on your way out of the matrix. I did once upon a time think that that is what you needed to do. I'm learning more and more, which is actually forming the, the book that I'm start, that's starting to, to kind of formulate called Unbound. I'm starting to understand how you become unbound and that it is actually within the game and you just stop playing. But not playing can mean sitting in the tennis but not being looshed, right? Sitting in the theatre but knowing it's a game. That's how you start to become unbound. That's how you start to reclaim your own mind. By looking at things and going, well, that's pretty fucked and I'm not playing. And I, I realize now how much the first book, how much set the tone is really the foundational stuff. I didn't know it. I wrote it before 2020. I did not know what was coming. Um, it's the foundation, it's all such a labyrinth, exactly. It's the foundation and then you build on it and you have to have the foundation before you can leave the matrix in certain ways. So you have to have the foundation of the mind stuff before you start to actually have the beliefs that open up opportunities for you. I don't know how much you know about um, sort of if, if you were already following around in 2021 my husband couldn't go to work because he's not and we had 
So basically he had long service leave that I had always wanted him to take. That from the time I met him, I said, take your long service leave. Let's like go on a big holiday. No, I was never able to talk him into it. Thank God. Because he started his long service leave and the mandates ended three days before the end of his leave. Now, his work tried to get rid of him that whole entire time, but we didn't play. Okay, so his work tried to get rid of him, we didn't play. Um, they tried to not give him his long service leave. We, didn't, we did not get caught in the fear of that. We held it, held it, held it, held it, and then he got it. We held it at every step of the way. We held the frequency of not some kind of like, kumbaya or it'll all be fine will be taken care of but a deep knowing and trust that we were making the right decisions and what i realized through that time is when you are that aligned when you are that aligned with your choices it's not that something will come up and save you but other opportunities come along that are also aligned with your choices so throughout that period of time we were given the opportunity, a number of people reached out and said, you could do this and he'd be able to go back to work, right? Not just one avenue, a couple. And every time we said, no, that does not align with us. We're not judging people who are doing that. I'm glad it's there. That's great. For some people, it'll be the right thing. For us, it is not the right thing. We are not aligned with that. So we would have sold the house. We would have sold the cars. We would have sold, I would have sold anything. I would have started selling trees on my property. I would have sold anything. We were so aligned with, we are not doing this, that but we had to hold it. Like literally we were holding it three days, three days before the leave ended, the mandates were dropped. They rang him and said, you're happy to go back to your normal shift pattern. And he literally went back on the day that he would have after his leave. Are we home and hosed? No. Other narratives will come along and go, are, are you sure? Like. We'll still, we'll still have challenging things. That is life. But we're learning to play it at another level. This is what I mean by the mastery. We're learning to play it at another level. And so how do you get out of the matrix? There's no simple answer to that for everybody. Like I would say start with where are you most hooked into it? If you're going like, I don't even know what the matrix is. Okay, where are you not free? Where are you not free? When you sit down and write all the aspects of your life, where would you say, but I can't do that? And I'm not saying start with, like if you write down, I can't leave my job that I hate. You don't start with leaving the job. You don't start with leaving the job. You start with filling your time away from work with a whole heap of things that you are aligned to that bring you joy. You will say, oh, well, I, I hate my job, I can't leave my job. And if I said to you, okay, so in your on your weekends or on your days off or on your, how much stuff do you do that you also hate that you can't not do? And you'll, you'll give me a whole list. So you start there. You start with the whole mindset shift of, but I can't right it is ridiculous to say well you're in that job because you because of your victim mentality just manifest a new one right that is a ridiculous thing to say that is not a starting point that is not a starting point for anybody but a starting point might be i always do this on a saturday because that's the group of people i've always caught up with but i haven't wanted to catch up with them for two years start there um i always like whatever whatever just whatever you do start with i do that but i don't really like doing it you just start and you just start dialing into i make choices that feel aligned with me and when you start to really move into that alignment 
your discernment is going to really come on online and it, you will just go that feels off i don't know why you don't need to know why you don't need to explain it to someone today i had a conversation with someone who said i i don't want to go to asia on a holiday i'm a little bit worried about not being and you know things could change they could decide different things whatever but I'm happy to go to Spain. Cool. Doesn't matter. You don't have to explain it. Trust your gut. For me, since 2020, I have family in Austria. I knew I, I will probably never see them again. I have not felt like it is okay for me to leave the country. So honor that. It doesn't matter. If you start honoring how you feel, and if you start honoring what you want to do, you're going to start living a life of alignment, and it's going to become really easy to go. Actually, I'm I'm navigating this more easily, because and then the opportunities will also show up that are more aligned. Does that make sense? Six forty. I think I've been talking forty minutes. Any questions? Anything you want to share? So I spoke about, I'm not going to repeat it, but go back to the start. I spoke about the tennis. I spoke about who do I trust? How do I know? Um, feeling a bit hopeless and dejected about like, well, is everybody controlled opposition? And you know what? It doesn't even matter. Like it doesn't matter. What we don't want to get caught in is going, arguing about who's controlled opposition. What you're doing is learning how to navigate your own path. That's mastery. Mastery is not looking to someone else to be your master, right? And really, mastery just means that like you're really good at something. Let's not get too caught up in that word. But the mastery aspect that is available to us now, the opportunity that's available to us now is that self-determining path, right? Where you, where you decide. Because this is the thing that we've been presented with. We've been presented with this outside force saying, right, you're doing this. And some of us have said, uh, no, I'm not. Well, if we're gonna stay in that, if we're gonna use that as an opportunity, if we're gonna use it as a catalyst, if you're gonna use it as a springboard, you, you don't wanna get stuck in ramming your head against that force and going, how dare you, how dare you, how dare you, which some people are, some people are stuck there. They're literally like, you know, like those kids toys, like the little robot man who kind of is just like butting his head against the wall. A lot of people are like that right now and they're butting their head against, how dare you tell me what I should do? And it's like, dude, Turn around. They stop telling you that. I don't know. Just, just, just walk a different direction. Like, why do you need them to be different to what they are? Okay, and that's another big aspect of the the set the tone the book that is already out. Not not the new one. Um, please don't ask me when the new one's out because I haven't even really started writing it yet. Like you'll be asking me possibly for years. But set the tone is also about not needing the outside to be different before you can be different because that was me right that was me i spent decades waiting for people to get it waiting for people to be the partners that i needed waiting for the friends to be whatever waiting for work to be situations to be i kept waiting i kept waiting I kept waiting on other people, waiting for other people, waiting for situations to be better, right? But I was like affirming and I was aware. I was aware. I was like a fairly intelligent person, like a normal, intelligent, like average person going, okay, I've read the books. I'm aware. I'm, I'm affirming, right? I, I know how this works. I know the power that I have. But because I didn't understand how the ego works, I was busy waiting for the outside to be different. And I can see that now. I can see how many people are doing that. They're waiting for the outside to be different. Well, I, ha I have to have that narrative completely crumble before I can get on the plane. I have to have those people know they were wrong and I was right. I have to have that group stand there and go, we're very sorry 
you were right. We regret our decision. Oh my God, how did we not listen to you? And I mean, that's just, that's ego wanting vindication because these people are literally butting their heads against a wall um, rather than just, just be on your path. Just focus on what's right for you. Just feel into that. Fine tune your own discernment. Fine tune your own intuition. Feel in. That message seems right, but that person seems off. That person seems okay, but that message seems off. That seems like theater. That seems fake. And once you get used to it, it becomes so easy to spot it. And then you do spend some of your time going, how are people not seeing this? Project Veritas, I'm looking at you. How are people not seeing this? I mean, I actually said to somebody like, the acting is that bad that if I was sitting at a primary school play and I was in the audience, at the end of it, I would have stood up and I would have said, kids, you can do better than that. That's how bad the acting was to me. I mean, my hubby and I, we just laughed. And yet and there's people saying to me, well, why do you think it's fake? So it's not that I'm more intelligent. It's not that I'm more evolved. It's not that I'm more anything. What it's showing me is when the veil drops, things get easier to spot, right? Because you haven't got that clouded judgment. It's like you've reclaimed enough of your mind to go, hang on, what? Right, and I think you can just start to see things really differently. Um, absolutely resonated with me. 2023 has seen me really let go of some, so many people and so much of the noise. Yeah, got to get rid of the noise. Got to get rid of the noise. Um, I've been feeling strongly about going to Australia. I'm wanting to go sometime this year. Oh, that'd be great, Haruka. Definitely keep me posted if you are here. Um, I loved your quote, the circus won't leave town until we stop buying tickets. Yes, the circus will not leave town until you stop buying tickets and you're buying tickets up here and you're buying tickets with your energy. So yesterday, so if I apply that, does that mean you can't go to the tennis? No, it doesn't mean that. Go to the tennis, enjoy the tennis. The circus part where you're buying a ticket to the circus is if you get rehooked in the, oh, um, we're, we're vindicated. You know, if you get hooked into the good guy and the bad guy, um, you know, the divide, um, repicking kind of at that. Um, yeah. Any questions, any comments? Um, if anybody's been here listening for a while, anything that really spoke to you that was a good reminder? I no longer need validation, which has been humbling to my being. So much freedom in each layer. Yes because it's the ego that needs the validation. So if you no longer no longer need validation, that's a brilliant move and shift out of your ego. And now when you do feel like you want to explain yourself to someone and you're like, don't, you know, oh my God, I need them to understand, then you'll know, see, that's where it's then a beautiful guide. And you go, oh, I forgot myself. I shifted into ego and I forgot myself there for a minute and I validate myself because this is the thing, when we're the adult in the room, we learn to give our own ego what it needs, right? Do you give yourself your validation? Um, a big thing throughout this time for me, um, you know, having been somebody that, you know, ha has like a nursing degree. So having studied biology, um, you know, sort of from year nine and then on through university, um, I didn't feel feel the need to explain to anybody why it didn't make sense. It's like, that. that's okay if you, you know, like it, it doesn't make sense to me if it makes sense to you. And there's so many nursing people, not that I really had a lot of nursing people still in my life because they already kind of, a lot of them fell by the wayside um, just with what I've already been speaking about for many years. Um, you know, I, I had to come out of the pharmaceutical Western medicine haze and that cult because, of course, when you're in it, even though for the 19 years that I nursed, I was looking around thinking, hmm, we don't seem to be helping anybody. Like I knew, I could see that. I, I could see that. 
However, here's a thing I think that a lot of people don't realize. There are lots of really good people working in that industry um, that are certainly that certainly think they're helping. So, but even though I spent all those years looking around, going, "Yeah, I don't, we don't seem to be helping anybody," um, I still was not really questioning pharmaceuticals, even though I was questioning the industry, because especially when I worked as a research nurse um, in the liver unit at Monash, and we, although I was working within the hospital in the sense that we would run clinic and see patients, they were all on trials, drug trials. Um, so I could see how that works and I could see the kickbacks to the unit right there was two drug companies that we ran trials for and they showered us in gifts basically uh, one of them um, paid for one nurse for a year like for each year her whole pay came from what the drug company gave to the unit the other things they gave us was flights dinners, um, all sorts of things. Now, they were education. They were education. We would go to, basically we would go and get pissed and stay in really nice hotels. But we would go to education, um, what would you call them? Like like seminars kind of thing. And they would all be on, on hepatitis. They'd all be on hepatitis A and B, uh, um, B and C, sorry, hepatitis B and C and like cirrhosis of the liver. They would be about exciting findings in research in hepatitis B and C. It was doctors from different units throughout Australia that presented the findings. But we weren't the ones doing the research. The pharmaceutical companies were. So really what it was was pharmaceuticals propaganda. It was pharmaceuticals handing us the research findings on the new drugs and then the doctors saying, oh, this is great. We've been running this one and we found that, you know, like 90% of people felt better when they were on drug Dulali. And we would get excited about it. And we would go back to clinic and we would say to patients there's a new drug coming that's had really good results with this do you want to sign up for it and they would go yes of course they were desperate they were really unwell so they would say yeah of course i want to sign up for it we would of course get a payment for every patient that we signed on to a drug trial and then we would continue to go to dinners and drink wine um, whilst we listened about the next exciting drug that was available on the market. And this is exactly what any money that you give to the Cancer Council goes to. It goes directly to pharmaceutical companies to do drug trials on cancer drugs. What they're doing is they're always trialing new forms of chemo that is what the majority of the money will go to you know maybe a bit will be thrown here or there to breast care nurses but probably most of it will go to new pharmaceutical to new chemo drugs and what they really mean by new chemo drugs hi Marianne, is um chemo drugs with less side effects um because you know it's not a good look when the person like is um so clearly dying from chemo um anyway that's a rant um I love how you have lived it all. Well, <laughs> you know, it's been a few years there. Um, do you feel there is a place for Western medicine, though, like treating broken bones? I feel like there is no place for Western medicine in its current form because it is a toxic cesspit. Um, it's kind of been... Like, I mean, it's fallen apart anyway. I think I think the mere, um, it's the smoke and mirrors at this point that it even still is standing. Um, but broken bones, no, you don't need it to treat broken bones. But 
of course, yes, I do believe there is a place we want to kind of, I suppose, use all the things we know. We don't have to pretend we're living in 1750 um, because I don't want to use anything. However, what we would ideally do is to look at things that we already know work and to make them better. And this is not the place of Western medicine. Western medicine looked at and still today looks at what works like a certain plant, a certain, you know, herb, a certain whatever. It looks at what works and then it looks to patent it and make lots of money from it and own it. And in that way, it's probably made everything worse. So, yeah. Um, with the whole ego thing, you've explained my husband exactly. And during our conversations, I'm trying to say something positive and his response really brings me down as his views are stuck in his belief system. Yes. So what's happening is, is his ego and he won't know he's in it, right? And he won't be intentionally in it. And it's really, I suppose, another way we could say is he's un his unconscious responses, right? So he's not necessarily... Or his tried and true um, responses are triggering your ego because it's your ego that then really gets down because your ego then says this is never going to change this is going to be like this forever he's never going to change he can't hear me he's not listening why can't I and that's that part of you that goes I need that to change before I can change. I need that to be before, you know. So I don't know whether you have read the book, Calissa. Um, but what you want to do is you want to start changing your end of it. So when you change your response, it will change. Now, your ego most likely will do what my ego did when I first started hearing that, which was just get really tired and go, fuck, why do I have to be the one again to change? Like, I'm already doing so much and now I have to be the one that, you know, because we get, we get so frustrated and then we feel like, why do I have to be the one that's like all aware and awake here and like almost like you're letting him off? But that's not the case. When you shift in your ego response to him, like if, so, you know, you know how I said when, like, when you can see something and you go, I'm not playing, this will be a matter of, so look, you might need to like have actually some, someone help you with that, like specifically what's happening. But as a general um, advice, you need to change from your end so that you get a different response. And you need to provide for you what you want him to provide for you. So if you don't feel heard, stop speaking, move away from the situation and hear yourself. And then, like the other person said, you won't need his validation. And when you already feel validated, you're going to come to that conversation completely differently to how you currently are coming to the conversation and then not feeling validated and heard by him. Right? So you are triggering his ego, but he may not even ever be out of his ego. Most of us, when we're really unconscious, are never out of our ego. So two people who are in a relationship, it's only ever really ego pinging off ego, ego pinging off ego, because that's what we do for each other. Kind of bring up the wounds, bring up the triggers, and then we look to the other person and go, you just brought up my trigger, which that's not, that's not what's happening. It's our own trigger coming up in response. So I hope that's helpful. Um, wow, I didn't know all that about what goes on in the medical industry. Yeah. I mean, how anybody works in the medical industry and can't see it at this point in time, I do not know. However, I do know that when I was in it, there's a lot that I didn't see too, even though I did see a lot, which is what I'm saying. Like I looked around and was like, this is toxic. Um, it's to it was toxic for so many reasons. It was toxic for us in it right? Because of how closed off and shut down you have to be. It was toxic for the patients because of how they were just treated like a victim and they were treated like, hang on, I'm just going to let my dog out. Do you want to go outside? Yeah, I'll go right, so as a patient, all your power's taken away, um, but all your power's kind of taken away as a doctor and a nurse as well, right? So... 
Um, even though I could see how toxic that was, it wasn't really until I left that I even started questioning. I didn't know that when I was in it. I didn't know. I didn't know any anything about that. <clears throat> Yes, so, um, wow, you are spot on with my feelings. Yes, because he brings up my own fears that I'm trying to overcome. So, from, so when the next time that happens, you can take a breath in your mind, say thank you for helping me to see this, and then do the pause and either like just leave it at that if he's like 99% of men that I know, he will be happy to leave it at that. He will go, oh, I'm so glad to leave it at that. And you get a chance to walk away and go, okay, so what just happened? And if it's actually, if you actually get the chance to grab pen and paper and sit down and go, what am I really upset about? That one question will change 99% of things that you are upset about. What am I really upset about right now? And then just take a breath and take a minute and let yourself answer that. And then you will get to what you're really upset about. And you will get to beneath the him, him aspect of it. And you will get to what you're really upset about. And then, or if you're walking away going, he's just not listening to me. You ask yourself, where do I do this to myself? Where do I do this to myself? That is another question. What am I really upset about? And where do I do this to myself, right? So if you think about 2020 and all the shit that went down and people telling you to do stuff even though you don't want to do it and it triggered you, it, if it triggered you, it triggered you because it's already there. It can't trigger you if it's not there. Something you're encountering for the very first time ever cannot trigger you. So if you were triggered into being told what to do and you really hated it or if you were triggered into whatever, right? Ask yourself, where do I do this to myself? And you will be amazed at how much you force yourself to do things you don't want to do. And then when you encounter that in the outside world, you, your ego gets really fucked off because it's already had enough of that in your internal world and it doesn't want to face it in the external world. Um, I haven't read your book, but I have been wanting to get it for me and my husband to read. So if you haven't read it, I am doing... It's not the reason why I did this live. There's a whole heap of things. If you're just coming in now, go back and listen if you want to hear about the tennis and a whole heap of other things. But I am doing a free book club on Set the Tone on YouTube starting from the 21st of March. I'm giving everybody a really long um, notice about that because it can take a long time. If you don't already have the book, it can take a long... Like once you order it, postal can be... Um, so you and your husband could both read it chapter by chapter, like you could read it separately. Like the chapters aren't very long. You'd be able to read it in a sitting, hand it to him. He can read it whenever he's ready. And then you can, um, watch the, the, so basically I'm just going to do like a book club. I'm going to do like, you know, take out the major take home um, lessons and also how to apply it, how to apply what you're learning in it for now. It's a very practical book already, but as I said, I wrote it before in the before times. And so I want people to be able to really apply it to now, to get relief now. Um, my ego was pissed back then. Yeah, my ego gets pissed too. And you know what? Sometimes my ego gets pissed and it's been a good thing. Sometimes, like when you have a conscious being pissed, it can be a good thing. Your ego can actually be the thing that goes, you know what, this is a bit fucked. And you go, yeah, you know what, it really is. And then you go, okay, we're not doing that anymore. You know, we don't want to always just be like, you know, float around love and light shit. Sometimes we want to turn around and say to someone, no, that's enough. And so that's another point, Alyssa. Like, you, I'm not saying to you, like, Oh, you know, just sit and like, just with your husband, go, oh, you know, that's okay, la la. Sometimes you might go, you know what, 
we're not doing this or I'm not I'm not talking to you while you're like this and you just whatever it it can it's not just about it's not about putting up with things at all it's actually about recognizing and this is the whole reason why the book is called set the tone nothing can change until you do because that is what I learned I learned that no situation that I am a part of can change unless I actually change because if I come to it in the same way even if it has changed I won't recognize it let's use that as an example of what's currently happening how many people do you know in your life that currently are still smacking their head against a brick wall when it comes to any aspect of this and you're like listen I'm already further along I don't even really want to hear that right not in a kind of suppressive way or not in a like, oh, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm over that. That's not. But how many people, I'd love to know if you know people that you feel like they're stuck because they have not shifted their um, gaze, their, their lens, their take on something where you're like, this is not actually really happening anymore right now right it's almost like being shell-shocked it's almost like having ptsd it's a form of ptsd really of thinking this is still happening and you're like this is not happening but to them it is and it's because they have not been able to shift their perspective and that is why it's called nothing can change until you do so Alyssa, it's about you shifting in how you interact with your husband has to have a change even if he doesn't change because your experience in it will change. And when we grow in any experience, it doesn't matter in what, work, relationship, whatever, we have to stop thinking of ourselves, we have to stop compartmentalizing ourselves as though we're someone different at home and we're, we are just, you are who you are, I am who I am, and we there is a continuum no matter where we are. We have to stop going, oh yeah, I hate my job, but this is all right, and that I am who I am. And when you start to really honor who you are and providing for yourself what you need, alignment, your intuition and your discernment, when you start to honor that, life will meet you there. That's not to say the shit fuckery will end. That's not to say the husband will suddenly go, oh my God, I've seen the light. Thank you, Alyssa. You are just the most amazing being I've ever come across. And, you know, you're just going to have the most amazing marriage. It doesn't mean anything. But what it means is you're going to start living the life that you want to live. And you're going to start realizing that that always had to happen that way. It always had to happen that way. It cannot happen from the outside in if the change has not occurred because you will not be able to receive it. So the example that I kind of use there a lot is, you know those um, those kind of round kids toy things that you can pull apart and they have the holes in them with different shapes. If you think of, um, say like, you know, being able to receive love, it's like, let's say love is like a circle. And so somebody is trying to put that shape there, but you can't receive it because you do not have like, a, 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 that shaped hole like you don't okay circle's not a good <laughs> okay square you don't have a square or a triangle shape <laughs> that can receive that love or can receive that validation or can even be heard right you, you could have that thing of like I am never heard and then no matter how heard you are you are going to walk away having that feeling because you're not able to receive it in fact when you're in an environment where you are heard you will feel uncomfortable as hell. Your ego is going to go, let's get the fuck out of here because I'm really uncomfortable right now. Okay? So I'm, I know that it's 7 o'clock and there's lots of swearing. You'll learn that if you have kids around, don't listen to a live. Um, yeah, so it has to. we have to be able to receive. That's a big part of it. Um, saw it as a long-term patient. Saw it as a long-term patient. Fiona, what do you mean by that? So yeah, okay, I might head off unless there's a question. I 
I hope this is helpful. Let me know what's spoken to you. Let me know what the reminder was. And I will do a post about the, um, the book club on YouTube. That's not what this live was about. So I will do a post about that reminding you. But if you want to do if you think, yeah, I, I want that. So it's free and it's not a lead into anything. There's no hard sell is going to come at the, at the, on the last one. If, um, if you want to join, order your book now because it can take a while to come. And you can buy the book physically in places. Um, making me emotional. You're so good at what you do. Oh, thank you, Alyssa. That's very, very kind. Um, I am good at what I do. <laughs> um, yep, I want to do the book club. Yes, great. So, so the question that I do need to ask of you all, and I might do this in my stories, would you like the book club to be live? Would you like the book club to be live? And of course, it'll be recorded. So if you can't make it live, you'll still be able to watch it at some other point. Or would you prefer just to have me kind of upload a video of me talking about um, yes. Is that yes to live? Shizza, is that yes to live? Um, so let me know. Let me know, whoever's here, if you're intending to do it, would you like it live? And let me know if you're watching the replay. And I will also do a, a, a bit of a thing. Yes, live. Okay. Um, so then I need to ask, I'm in West Australia. I'm happy either way and do my best to be available. Oh, well, that's yes. Being in West Australia, I understand why that you would write that. Um, like, you know, it's tough, isn't it? Like, it's tough. It's tough um, having such a big time difference um, in the one country. Um, so then I think, why don't we do it? What is the 21st? What is the 21st? <laughs> I just chose the 21st because um, it's um, kind of the equinox. But maybe it's better on a Sunday if we're going to do it live. Is that the case? Okay, that's a Tuesday. Do you know why I'm saying that? Because I don't really like to do stuff at night. I prefer to do it during the day. So um, I probably would prefer to do it like on a Saturday or Sunday if we're going to do it live. Otherwise, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it Sunday. Okay, but does that work? I don't think that works because I am. Okay, I'm going to see. As you can see, it's beautifully thought out, planned as usual. <laughs> um, look, all I can say, if you've just come in now and you're like, oh my God, is this what she's going to be like? All I can say is I'm very good on the fly. I'm, I'm actually better than, the more I prepare for stuff, the more I'm like, I'm very good with like just one word and go. So um, don't be concerned that I haven't really even quite figured out exactly when I'm gonna take it to a vote on the stories. Okay, I will do that. I will do that. Um, because, I mean, like I would prefer to do it during the day and a lot of people could be available. I mean, Monday lives used to be, you know, in the morning and lots of people turned up. So we might just do it on a Tuesday during the day. Because it would be nice to start on the 21st. All right. Great to see you all. It's been a good conversation. I hope it's helpful. Okay, if you were dejected about the tennis, I hope it's helpful. If you feel a bit hopeless about, oh my God, how much can controlled opposition is there who do I believe I hope it's been helpful if you um, needed a lesson on ego and what it is and how it's really actually part of your guidance system I hope it's been helpful and um, if you have not read set the tone and what I've spoken about it today sparks your interest and you want to read it you can order it online from any online book or if you go to Sabina Jackson author um, where you can physically buy it from, you'll see that in saved stories. 
So there's that too. All right, everyone. Good conversation. Um, I think you're all doing beautifully. I think that, you know, I was saying to someone today, when I was nursing, I was so burnt out that I despised <laughs> humankind. Like, I just really would get so frustrated with people that I just would be like, fucking people are, like, are not willing to take any responsibility. They don't even know what medication they're on. They're just willing to like lie in a bed and have somebody, you know, heal them or whatever. And um, I just was really burnt out. I was exhausted and I was burnt out. And the system had, I mean, the system for me, I used to say it's soul destroying and I wasn't joking. It really was. It was soul, was soul destroying. Um, but having left it and with what I do now in the way that I work with people, when I interact online, in the kinds of conversations that I have, in how I see you all show up and how much we have grown and evolved and how insightful we are. You know, the other day, um, I can't even remember what I put up. Um, and everyone was like, yep, spotted that loose. Yep. Saw it straight away. I was like, look at us just really in our mastery like seeing the game for what it is not playing and just choosing wisely and making better choices and there's no one thing you're ever going to do like some things can completely change your life of course like sometimes for the worse sometimes for the better but on the whole lives change when you just choose better, choose better, choose better, choose better, choose better. It's not about, oh, I got, I got caught in that pothole. It's not about the falling into the pothole that's the issue. If you, like, it's, it's then recognizing, oh, I fell in it. And we just get, we recognize it more and more quickly, right? So we'll still fall into potholes, but what happens is you recognize it. It doesn't take you decades lifetimes to recognize it it doesn't take you years anymore it, it takes months or it takes weeks sometimes it takes days or an hour now you recognize it literally you fall into it and you go i just fell into a pothole that's the aim of the game and then you start to see it and you walk around them right and that's the aim of the game that's what mastery is about all right great i'm glad you were able to be here and i'm glad you've enjoyed it um i will um this will also be uploaded to YouTube. So if you did want to rewatch it or share it from there or whatever, you can. And um, yeah, so more information about the book club will be um, soon. Thanks, Sabina. So many great reminders as always. Oh, thank you. It's Ange, isn't it? It's Ange. Um, okay. Much love to you all and have a good night.